Justin Gaethje, welcome back to BT Sport. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, fight week, another fight week, another day, another dollar. It's five years now. Completed in the in the UFC. Ten fights. I've lost count of how many bonuses, mate. It's it's, yeah. it's just got absolutely ridiculous. Just as many. Just as many, yeah. indeed. From a from a fan's point of view, and obviously from a consumer of UFC, we've loved it. How how do you reflect on it? Those five years. Oh, it's just a crazy ride, you know. Um, I remember 2008 was my first amateur fight. Um, doing it for fun. Never thought this would be a career. And to, to be here now is, is extraordinary for myself, for my family. Um, and yeah, I'm glad to put my mark as the most exciting fighter that's ever stepped in there. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Because any, when anybody sees your name on a ticket, I think they clamor to, to purchase. Oh, yeah. What are, you, what are your ambitions going forward? Because it's all well and good being the most exciting yeah. guy in there. But I've yeah, heard I mean, you speak in the past about trying to achieve gold. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, I have, a, I have a gold belt hanging at my house, but it's an interim title. I'm um, sitting at number three, um, very close. A big win over Fizia puts me right back there. You know, you got Darius and Oliveira fighting. Mm -hmm. uh, they got to figure that out, and then the winner's going to fight the champion. And um, if I need to fight Poirier in between that, I will. If not, someone's going to fight that winner, and that'll be me. Is this now about fighting for you? Because you've always been, a, my take on it is that you've always yeah. fought for the fans. You've always fought I mean, for the, the fans. crazy thing is, is this, this, is, this is me. Um, yeah. This is how I compete. Um, you know, I, I give max effort to myself, to my family. Um, it's never been about being the most exciting fighter. That's just the way it is. Yeah, it happens to be who I am. The division, obviously, since we last saw you, has had a few changes. Obviously, we've got a new champion. We've had some new challenges and what have you. How have you made of the, of the landscape at 155? It's, uh, I'm a huge fan of the sport. I mean, it's, it's a progression, you know, naturally. Um, sport's ever-evolving. Um, these strong Sambo grapplers are, um, you know, really putting their name on the sport. Volkanovski did a good job at um, really putting a huge challenge up against that. And, yeah, I mean, it was impressive. And the contest that you've got in front of you at the weekend against Rafael Fiziev, again, one of those guys that is is, is coming through the division and, yeah. and taking a shot at one of the more established players in this division. Yeah, I mean, again, part of the process, part of the evolution. Um, you know, coming off a loss, I find it natural to fight one of these guys um, just outside the top five. Um, so that's what I'm doing. What do you? What are your learns from the fight against uh, Charles last time out? Last time we saw you in the octagon. Um, I mean, the biggest takeaway. I mean, being at home, having Rose go before me with with a performance. I was really emotional. I really got caught up and, you know, I'm, I'm human and the, the emotions got to me. I went out there, I don't even recognize myself in that cage that night because of um, the factor of the emotions that I let overcome uh, my ability to be perfect. Um, I was far from perfect and that's what I took away from it. Did that surprise you on that night? That you got so emotionally involved in, obviously, a teammate's yeah, fight, I mean, which then affected your in fight. In hindsight, absolutely. But when you're in there, you don't know. Yeah. You know, it's just, you think it's the, just trying to be natural. That's naturally who we are as humans. You know, we are emotional. And uh, that's, that's the biggest challenge, to go in there and um, be emotionless. So with that in mind then, obviously, you're in London with, an, with another teammate, uh, with Kamari this time around. How do you then... Well, I get to go first this time. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's very similar to wrestling our whole life. You know, we've, we've had such similar paths in our, in our journey here. Um, when you're in a dual competition, you have your whole teammates, your whole team coming with you. They're wrestling before you, they're wrestling after you. Uh, I find it a huge factor is inspiring your teammate to perform, and that's by getting a win and being perfect. And so that's, uh, that's my goal on Saturday. You come across as a guy, and I might be completely wrong with this, that either likes life really fast or likes it really slow. There doesn't seem to be an in-between with you. Is that a, a really, fair assessment? I love both of those both of those states. Um, when these fights are leading up, it gets so fast, and then when it's over, it slows down so much, and I really do enjoy that part too, yeah. I live home alone. Um, it's quiet. Sometimes I have to make sure my voice still works. Like, hello, <laughs> hello. But, uh, yeah, I, I enjoy both of those things. But how much does that help? prepare for the manicness of what you're experiencing this week? Yeah, I control all the chaos in my life. Um, I think that's a huge factor. You know, I would love to have a family. Um, my twin brother has four daughters. 
I can only imagine the chaos that goes on in that house every night. Um, but you know, I think it. Uh, I think it serves me well, being able to control everything. With that period of time that we've seen you away from the octagon, we we see you obviously enjoying other things than MMA. I know that you're a keen golfer, and obviously spending. You just mentioned your family there. I know that you're, this is a big part of your life, and obviously working with people in the community as well. Yeah, uh, and helping them again. How does that shape you to get ready for? Yeah, I mean, a family um, like this. I just, uh, you know, I'll always be who I am, you know, natural. I, I love helping people. That, that makes me feel good. And I love competing. So outside of fighting, I love competing in golf, um, ping pong, pool, darts. Anything. Um, anything, yeah. I got my buddy Luke, who's my coach. Uh, I take a lot of money from him. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the golf course we saw uh, last year, was it the first one last year, the Justin... Get you invitational? Did you do your your, your charity yep. golf day? How did yeah. it all go? It was great, man. We had a great turnout. Um, sold out, you know, really quick. We're gonna do it again this year. Raise a bunch of money for a a nonprofit that I've been working with for many years out of Texas. Um, started off as a a bunch of Purple Heart recipients. Now it's vets in general uh, that that are they um, they go around. They put on recreational sports. They have softball teams, baseball teams, volleyball teams, basketball teams, and they bring the vets together. And they compete with each other. They, um, you know, they're really big on camaraderie, as as us U.S. Uh, fighters are, and so you know, it really translates over pretty well. Do you, I don't know if you remember this, but you were on Fight Island fighting, and you uh, you made a bet with me, and it was a golf bet, and the bet that you said was that you can throw a ball. Do you remember this from the tee on a par three? This was yeah to the green. As long as it's 125. Oh, no, no, this wasn't in the bet. Yeah, it was. Go back. And look at it. I didn't say any green. I wouldn't make that bet. No, you, only... said, you said par three is what you said. Yeah, but what's kind of like a 200-yard par three or 125 so, okay, yard Okay, then you make the stipulation now. How many yards? 120. 120-yard 120 par three. You can go tee to green, throw in the ball. Yes. And you made a bet. Yeah. Okay, have you done it yet? Because what I, I will honor the bet. So next time you're on the golf course. I will, oh, the, oh, the bet only counts when I do it in front of you. Of course. But no, I no, no. would, you never, you I would never make a bet that I didn't know I could win. Which is, a sensible, which is a sensible thing to do, yeah. of course. My point is, when you do do it, I will honour that bet for, uh, for the charity that you've just been right. speaking about there. All right? All right. Um, this fight at the weekend, the fans in the UK are extremely excited. A lot of them calling it the fight of the night, the oh, yeah. one that is going to provide the most excitement. Will it provide the most excitement, or will it be a Justin Gaethje masterclass? I think naturally, whether it's a Justin Gaethje masterclass or that, that is the most exciting fight of the night. Um, it's how I fight. Again, it's who I am. Um, and I have a dance partner that's willing to do the same exact thing. Uh, go through hell, face adversity, and come out on top. Um, so I think it's going to be absolutely the most exciting fight. Um, I think I'm going to be perfect. Um, you know, the master class versus Tony Ferguson is still the most exciting fight of the night. Um, same with Chandler. Mm -hmm. You know, face a tiny bit of adversity. But, you know, I don't see myself facing no adversity on Saturday night. I got a formidable opponent that's going to be, you know, young, hungry. A dangerous combination, and I'm expecting to again be perfect. Um, it's going to be a beautiful dance. I think the majority of people concede that you will fight at some point for the title again. When that happens, do you think it will be against Islam Makachev, or do you think it will be somebody else that is holding gold? Hmm. I mean, that's a long ways in the future. Um, I've I've got here only by taking it one fight at a time. Um, to to overlook. This fight on Saturday night would be foolish. And, you know, again, formidable opponent, dangerous opponent, hungry opponent. Um, there's no way I can look past that. What the future holds, you know, only God knows that. You were fought in, some, in front of some amazing crowds. I remember being at MSG that night when you fought Chandler. That was absolutely crazy, yeah. the way that people reacted. How much are you looking forward to fighting on British soil in front of these crazy UK fans at the weekend? Yeah, I've said it many times. I'm going to blow the roof off this arena, O2. Um, give every fan in attendance... Uh, the adrenaline rush that they come forward like I do every time. Justin, looking forward to another highlight. Go well this week, enjoy it, safe cut, and we're looking forward to seeing you do your thing on Saturday night. All right, yes, sir. Welcome to BT Sport Box Office. Anyone can enjoy a BT Sport Box Office event, and you don't have to be a BT Sport customer, have a BT ID, or a BT Sport login to do so. Here's how to buy using the BT Sport Box Office app. Follow the registration sign-up process and create an account. Once you're logged in, select the event you wish to watch. 
and follow the instructions to purchase. You can pay with a credit or debit card and through your EE, O2 or 3 mobile bill. But if you've bought a BT Sport box office event before and already have an account, simply log in to bt.com forward slash sport box office and select the event you wish to buy. Once you've bought the event online, download the BT Sport box office app to your mobile or tablet. You can also access the event online through our web player or to view on your TV, you can cast the app using Chromecast or AirPlay on supported devices. And finally, remember you only need to pay online if you want to watch the event on the BT Sport box office app. Enjoy the show.